So one of the suburbs uh, by Chicago is called Orland Park. And the mayor over there is a guy named Keith Pacow. He's running for Congress in Illinois' 6th District. And he's warning that crime in Illinois could spiral out of control after a new law overhauling the state's criminal justice system goes into effect in January. So this is something that I've talked about on the channel before. The It's called the Safety Act or the Illinois Safety, Accountability, Fairness, and Equity Today Act. And uh, some people have called this the purge law. Um, and that term is disputed. You know, the people who are... Uh, in favor of the law are saying that that's totally inaccurate and unfair way to characterize it, but it's basically an all an overhauling of Illinois' criminal justice system. It is supposed to make things more fair for low-income and minority uh, inmates or people who have been arrested. And um, this is going to change, make some pretty significant changes. So the end of cash bail is one of them, but um, it has multiple provisions. It also limits how flights determine whether defendants are flight risks and allows defendants under electronic monitoring to leave home for 48 hours before they can be charged with escape. So, you know, you get put on the ankle band or whatever. This particular law is going to let you leave home for two days, two 24-hour periods, and you can't be charged with escape until after that. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments section, you know, whether you think this is a good idea or not. But the legislation is coming from Governor J.B. Pritzker. He signed this into law last year, and it will go into effect on New Year's Day 2023. And uh, Pacal, the mayor of Orland Park, said, I don't think we know what's coming from this. I think we can project that if criminals are allowed to run free and police officers can't protect citizens, citizens are going to start protecting themselves and taking the law into their own hands. So the Safety Act is 764 pages. It passed both chambers of Illinois' legislature in seven hours with no formal hearings or debates and without input from stakeholders, three former Illinois justice system officials wrote in a Chicago Tribune op-ed. So they said the whole thing is concerning to me because it was just a potpourri of everything and it didn't bring into consideration law enforcement, judges, or all the stakeholders in place, according to Bacow. He said, and he was telling this to Fox News, he said it was basically to allow criminals to go free. So the law also implements a higher standard on when a defendant can be detained for several crimes, including second-degree murder, aggravated battery, arson, and kidnapping. The new rule replaces cash bail with a judge's determination on the defendant's flight risk and risk to the public from the evidence prosecutors submit. The reforms being passed around the country revolve around the idea that the criminal shouldn't be held and Pacal said I think that's absurd so the judge's discretion to you know um set bail and things like that and or or not give a bail uh this is different from like the the state to the feds uh sometimes you know I mean you, I'm talking about like the patterns that you see like at the state level at the federal level um it's obviously a lot easier to flee you know when you're talking about the state than when you're talking about the feds uh you show up to the airport when you've got a case in the feds and odds are you're going to get booked at the airport. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the state, they don't always keep track of those things. Um, and there's a lot of ways that guys take off and flee. But, um, you know, with the feds, you're talking about a nationwide deal. Like the feds have access to everything. Greyhound bus, uh, Amtrak, like the, all the databases to every basically form of transportation you can take other than your own vehicle. And then, like, you know, if you're taking your own vehicle to flee, you get pulled over for anything. And it's curtains because, you know, that's put into to the, uh, I believe there's a national database that all law enforcement agencies uh, share with the federal government. And then, like, any little thing, like, you can't even spit in public. You know, you got to stay real low if you're trying to flee from the feds. Uh, and so if you are a flight risk, you know, they can, the, the feds can take measures to base, basically ensure that you're not going to be able to leave um, or it's going to be extremely difficult. So proponents have argued that the Safety Act will combat systemic racism and make the criminal justice system more equitable since according to a 2022 U.S. Commission on Civil Rights report, minorities disproportionately face higher rates of pretrial detention. Now, this is one of those things where they may be looking at one factor amongst a group of factors 
that they potentially could look at but are not looking at. Okay, so is it only their race that's determining the pretrial detention or is it the nature of the crime as well? Is it the lawyer they have? I know a lot of times, you know, black and brown inmates, they go in there with public defenders compared with the white and the Asian uh, inmates who go in there with paid attorneys. These are all factors, you know, so the race is one factor, but sometimes they, they look at only the race. And so it, it gives an incomplete picture and an inaccurate picture when they're talking about that statistic. A lot of times the minority offenders, too, they have priors. And I'm just saying what it is uh, more, you know, more commonly than the Asian guys or the, the I mean, Asians are minorities, too. But like typically the, the black and brown compared with the Asian inmates, you know, they got more priors. I mean, it just is like that. And then. You know that that's a factor, okay? And when you're when you're determining like pretrial detention, um, and they said uh, we'd be ending wealth-based jailing and restoring the presumption of innocence in the courtroom. So see right there, they said wealth. That's a big factor. If you go in there with a paid attorney, it's a whole different different situation. I'm not hating on public defenders, but you know that's the that's the pattern in the in the criminal justice system. And they said that's something that's really under fire. And it's not valued under our current system. This is according to Kareem Butler, who's a pretrial justice fellow of the Chicago Appleseed Center for Fair Courts. And uh, exactly what that organization is, I don't know, but it's it uh, from the name, it appears like a civil rights organization to try to you know create equity in the in the system. And in addition to eliminating cash bail, Pacao also highlighted how the law will drop trespassing from a class A misdemeanor to class B. So trespassing on somebody's property, that's gonna be a, a lighter offense. He said that police, as a result, won't be able to physically remove nonviolent trespassers from a property. So that's very interesting. In Orland Park, he said, our police officers would say that if someone's trespassing, the best tool they have to get someone to leave willingly is to say, you're trespassing, please leave or we will arrest you. He said, well, now they can't arrest you. They can only write you a ticket. So. They get to stay in that business or on your property, at your house, etc. So Pacao is concerned that this could all happen if residents stop relying on the police. He's saying that we create potential anarchy because law enforcement can't do their job and then people feel that they have to do that job. He said people aren't trained in the use of force. They're not trained to de-escalate situations. So he's talking about people may take matters into their own hands. If they've got somebody trespassing on their property and the police cannot remove that person, then the property owner themselves might just come out and shoot that person. And he's saying lots of bad things can happen out of this and it could potentially spiral out of control relatively quickly. He said he hopes Illinoisans will vote out the state legislators who passed the bill as well as Pritzker. He said, I really hope that this thing gets repealed. He said, I hope the voters wake up and do the right thing. Their votes matter. So let me know what you guys think about the Safety Act in the comment section. That one about trespassing and the one about flight is uh, is very interesting. Um, you know, people that have connections in other countries and stuff, uh, if they've got 48 hours, I mean, that's enough time um, to dip. So, I mean, that's, this is gonna be a very interesting situation to see if, you know, flights uh, increase, flights of criminals. And it's gonna be interesting to see if there's a lot more incidents involving people that are, you know, on other people's property and that the police cannot get forcibly to leave. Now, to, it, it's kind of unlikely that homeowners will come out and get crazy with the person when the police are standing right there. But if the police have to just come up you know, to the person, write them a ticket, and then leave and take off, and then the person is left to deal with the situation on their own, that could definitely be a very volatile situation, man. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section, man. About the safety act, some people have called it the purge law, but you know, like I said, a lot of people who are in favor of the law say that that's unfair. Me personally, I think this is kind of a bad idea, you know, because you'd rather have. I know the police make mistakes. I you know I know they've killed innocent people, but compared to people like I'm talking about regular civilians and uh, you know just ordinary residents that have killed innocent people, I'd say you know I, I'd rather have the police dealing with the situation than just ordinary civilians with guns, you know, that's gonna be a very crazy situation, man. But um, you let me know what you guys think in the comment section, section man. This is your boy, when you see the report, I'm out.